Hello everyone and welcome to the final chapter of Tell Me Why. In the last session we finished chapter 2. We didn't forgive Eddie, we did forgive Tessa. And uh, we learned more about what was going on in the night and the nights surrounding when Marianne died. The Mad Hunter being our father. And uh, yeah, let's hopefully find out his identity and see if there's any more twists to the tale, shall we? I really liked how uh, chapter 2 began. Hopefully chapter 3 does a similar style. Sure does. Very nice. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, crafty goblins faced the truth about the darkness in the big wooden house. It had come for the wise princess, driving her mad and causing her to attack them. When they started asking questions about the princess in the darkness, the goblins realized that no one else in the forest wanted to know the truth. So they dug and searched and asked hurtful questions, learning more about the wise princess than they had ever hoped to. But the search took its toll. The darkness was proving too much for Sister Goblin, and yet Brother Goblin kept diving deeper and deeper until Sister Goblin finally said, enough. And that was how the goblins found themselves separated again, hurt and confused, with so many unanswered questions and too many open wounds. All right. I like those little sort of storyboard, not storyboard, that's the wrong word for it, but that kind of style of recap. They do a good job with those. Allison, wake up. Uh <laughs> Um <laughs> question mark
You killed me! Yikes. Chapter 3, Inheritance. Bad, uh, bad times to be Alison, having these nightmares or whatever it is that she's having. Would not enjoy. Not one bit. Spinny, spinny, spin, spin. So is she still living with Eddie? And I assume Tyler's not living with Eddie? So is Tyler just sleeping in the in Mary Ann's house? Oh, I guess because they had that falling out at the end of uh, chapter two. So maybe she's just gone back to Eddie's. Morning. I started collecting the documents you need for your rental application. Left the file for you downstairs on the kitchen counter. If you're still coming to meet Dee for lunch, you can drop off the documents and I'll make some copies for you. Take it easy today, Uncle Eddie. My famous buck-up buckwheat waffles are slowly growing cold in the kitchen. He's right. Time to get my shit together. I guess I'll have to start fresh with these in Juno. <laughs> Oh no, whatever will you do without a very, very occasional free coffee? I wonder if Eddie will ever trust me again. I don't think he distrusts you now. I could use a Michael pep talk. Hmm. Uh, what have we got? Much to look at? Now would be a good time to stop smoking and maybe do a detox. Well, you smoke? Did I know that? I'm disappointed, Allison. It kills you. How did we go from being so alike to, to total opposites? I gotta think about something else. Wish I could just book a one-way ticket to the other side of the world. <laughs> nice shirt. Some free advertising. There's not enough concealer in the world to erase the night I had. Good to know I look just as bad as I feel. You look fine. I could do my laundry. Ugh. Maybe later. Maybe never! 
Never could bring myself to send these. Whenever I tried to tell him how much I missed him, it felt unfair. Damn. Hi, Tyler. I know we haven't talked by phone in a while, and I think that's mostly my fault, so I'm sorry. I've just been so wrapped up in my own problems, sometimes I forget you aren't that far away. Senior year has been the worst year ever. I dated this guy for a few months, Bobby, hopefully you don't remember him, only to realise he was a total jerk who didn't give a shit about me. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out, or why I let it take over my entire school year. I honestly feel so stupid. But I also feel stupid for feeling stupid. Ah! Anyway, I think what I'm trying to say is life sucks without you. I miss you. I miss your presence and I miss talking in our voice. Do you want to come to my graduation party next Friday? Nothing amazing, we'll just have dinner with Uncle Eddie and some neighbours. Tessa might swing by. I'd really love it if you were there. I realise now I could just call and invite you. I don't know why I'm writing a letter, but maybe with all the time apart I've forgotten how to communicate with you. I'm sorry. I hope we can get back to where we were someday soon. Love, Alison. And then she never sent it. I gotta take care of that rental application. Feels bad. Anything to look at out here? The days have gotten so short. It's gonna be a long winter. I miss the slopes. Eddie looks so young here. <laughs> That's Eddie? Oh god. What the... Probably eat something. God, I feel so weak. That's weird. I couldn't. I couldn't like. I. It was on the. There was a thing on the stairs, but I couldn't actually like tune into it or whatever you'd call like focusing on it. <sighs> so many months of snow boots ahead. Again, that was a really effective opening, and much though I hate the fucking copyright music that gets me. <laughs> gets my videos claimed, they do always choose very effective music to pair with whatever scenes are going on at the time. He doesn't like this kind of attention, but he really does so much for the community. Dear Chief Brown, thank you so much for bringing our children home safe last weekend. Without you, they might have gotten behind the wheel, and who knows what could have happened to them or anyone else. We'll always be grateful for your wisdom. Thanks again for keeping this off the books. They're good kids who made a mistake, and Lord knows how a police record can compromise a child's future. We know they will remember your words for a long time, but please rest assured that we will do whatever we can to make sure they understand the extent of what could have occurred, so they can raise awareness among their peers in the community. God bless you, Gail and Toby Locklear. Karen and Brody Moore. I need to get all that paperwork together. Maybe that'll help me focus and clear my head. I wish Eddie's mom could have taught me how to do this. I like the uh, look of this little town just out this window. We haven't actually seen like that much of it. Despite the game being set here. <laughs> Maybe if I make something for Dee, it'll help calm me down. I should have let myself enjoy these trips more. Hello, what have we got here? Michael's special creamy crab hot pot. Oh, it's just a it's just a recipe. Uh there's the food. Here's the file. Just need my ID and pay stubs. Okay. Emily, Allison, how could you do this to me? Uh fuck. I've gotta think about something else. Focus. ID and pay stops. Yeesh. Eddie says there's a plant for every pain. Except heartache. Wow. So deep, Eddie. <laughs> I so don't want to go back to the station. Not after yesterday. Must be great to feel like you belong somewhere. Anywhere. Uh, that's the ID. We'll wait to pick that up. Eddie loved his Mishka so much. God, the world feels so fucking small right now. 
I've got to find a way to get out of my head. I haven't had any time to sketch lately. Nice drawings. Wish I could draw. I wonder what Tyler's up to out of the house. <laughs> What's this thing on the balcony? I want it. Gimme. I don't feel like listening to anything right now. You literally put on your fucking vinyl in your room not five seconds I wish ago. I thought shooting some hoops would help me forget all this. I wonder what Michael would think about all this. Would he even get it? He'd be on Tyler's side. I wish you could just change your mood as easily as a record. I can't really eat anything right now. Fair. Uh, where was the ID? Here. Ah, here's my ID. Hang on, hang on. Let me put that down and then look at the other stuff first, because that's probably the actual thing we need. What if I just packed a bag and left? Never looked back. I'm always paranoid that I'll get locked out of stuff if I don't if I don't do everything else first. I wonder if I'll ever hear from Tina again. Oh, the real estate person. All right. We probably could have looked at them after getting this out, but you know, just in case. <laughs> This place is never much more than a bachelor pad, huh? There was so much I planned to do. All those sacrifices I made. And how do you repay me? Lying to my face? You're not my child. My clan deserves better. Allison, you have to stop torturing yourself. Just grab your pay stubs so you can get the hell out of here. Big yikes. I'm assuming that these visions she's getting are not like any real things. I'm assuming they're just her mind playing tricks on her kind of thing. Uh, uh Allison, please. It's a damn shame. Come on, Allison. Don't start. Where would pay stubs be? Oh, there was another room I didn't check, right? In here? Aha! Eddie looked pretty concerned when I came home last night. God, feels like my head's full of screeching monkeys right now. I'm glad he never pushed me to change my last name. Hmm. That's his parental rights thingy. Still can't believe Eddie never told me he was paying for fireweed. I still can't believe he did tell you that you didn't get into that college. Can we not? Oh. Hmm. I don't think I know any Claire's in Delos Crossing, but I shouldn't be snooping in here. We should totally uh, take that with us. <laughs> five 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 four nine one. I wonder if that will ever be useful. Oh, she is actually taking it. What? Why would you move it? If you don't want him to know you've been snooping, why would you pick it up and then put it down somewhere else? What? What? Allison. What are you doing, girl? Eddie. 
Eddie must have been back and forth to Juno all the time to these shows before he got stuck here taking care of me. Cheeky little saxophone. I haven't heard him play in a while. It just sits there collecting dust. This is personal. We should read it. My dearest son, I know I'm not getting better this time, so I wanted to write a few things down for you. I'm sorry to be leaving you so soon. I had you late in my life, but I still thought there would be more time. It makes me happy to know you will have the clan when I'm gone, and you will have your auntie to look after you. You have always seemed to know when it was time to leave. From the time you were a year old, you knew which shoes belonged on which feet, and you used to bring me mine whenever I was getting ready to go somewhere. I could never figure out how you knew and how you knew I was ready to leave, but there you'd be, with my shoes every time. You never cried or made a fuss, just helped me on my way. I hope this leaving will be just as easy, and though I won't need you to fetch me my shoes, I know you'll help me on my way. Your strength has always been to accept what is, and to do what needs to be done. I'm so proud of you for joining the police force. People are going to look to you as a leader now, and I know you won't let them down. Please, help the young people remember our way of life. We have thrived as a people since time before memory, because of our cultural values. Don't let them lose that. Also remember how important it is to attend to everyone, not just the ones who fit in. It is our way to lift each other up. Everyone has something to offer the community. They may not even see it in themselves, so you've got to show them. Help them along their path as you've always done. Remember, when you uplift others, it makes you stronger too. Uh, and then <laughs> some of their own language, which I won't insult them by trying to pronounce. Marianne, what's going on with you lately? If you need help... It's nothing. This is nothing. Hmm. Is it nothing? A secret keeper in her secret keep. Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. Okay, it's the eye with three lines underneath. Oh, wait, that's the one we're already on. That was the previous thing. Uh, But it's not a number lock this time. What can I do with this thing? Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that'll help me figure this out. I mean... What would... Eh? What? What? Maybe there's something in the Book of Goblins that will help me figure this out, but there's no, like... There's no code to put in, or... I don't understand. <laughs> there's nothing about a box or anything in here. But this is the only one with this symbol on it. I can't, like, there's nothing I can do. I'm trying all the buttons. Looks like this is coin-operated. Oh? Well, then let's find a coin, I guess? Uh, anything here? I feel like I've clicked everything. Well, I've clearly missed something. Coin operated. Stop sulking. Did I go in here? Okay, folk. The paperwork's not down there. Ah. Okay, where the fuck have I missed? Uh. Wait, don't tell me it's in here. Could I actually open this? Because I examined this before, but it wouldn't let me open it. Oh. Uh, that's just her rent stuff. Hello. To whom it may concern, in regard to her current rental application, I can confirm Alison's employed here since 2013. Accounting assistant. Do, do, do. Yearly salary of 24k plus bonuses. No disciplinary record. Okay, it's just a reference. Where am I missing something? <laughs> The fucking pay stubs or whatever. I feel like I've looked everywhere. It's not that. That was what we got the previous thing from. 
We can't go outside. They wouldn't be outside anyway. That wouldn't make sense. It's not there. Guys, am I being super dumb? All my recent pay stubs should be in that folder in my room. What? Didn't I look at everything in your room? How did I miss something? I told him I wanted to stop messing with those memories. But he wouldn't listen. <gasps> Sister, we look out for each other. That's what you said. But you don't mean what you say, do you? Oof. They're just words. You left me, Allison, all alone and scared. <laughs> Strong oof. What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, is it? Ah, uh, it's under her bed. Not here. Nope, it's not. <sighs> What's the point in even having that as a thing? Why, why let you look under the bed if there's nothing under there? Here we here go. There. Yeet. Okay, I think I've got everything I need for the application. I'm pretty sure you couldn't click that before, right? That just wasn't an option, I think. Where's that coming from? Where did I leave my phone last night? Somewhere in here? Feels like it's getting fainter. I don't think there's any reason my phone would have ended up here. Uh... In here? deal with you right now it's under that book right there's a blue light coming from it not here is there actually going to be anything else to inspect here or is it just going to be her going not here in everything God, where is it because I feel like answering the phone would end the scene but it seems like maybe she'll just be like, it's not here. Yeah, no, okay. Let's wait for the person to call back again. I wonder if it's Tyler already. I wonder if it makes a difference if you find it when it's ringing or not. What's it doing here? Oh, D. Finally. I was starting to get worried. Why didn't you pick up? Yeah, uh, sorry. I, uh, I didn't have my phone on me. Could never be okay. me. Well, I just wanted to make sure we were still on for lunch. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm getting ready right now. That so? Because it kind of sounds like I woke you up. <laughs> That's just how I sound. But anyways, I still have a few things to do before I can leave, but I'll be there. All right, hon. See you soon. <sighs> I don't know how people... Get it together, Allison. Just 
grab the file, get dressed, and head out. Or it'd be nice to make a gift for Dee. I don't know how people God. leave a, their phone in places. <laughs> I, I can't. I've got to have it nearby you, and know where it is. Uh, fish and game. Nothing interesting. <laughs> Eddie's been too busy to fish lately. I know he's missing it. Oh, poor Eddie. What a tragedy. We are all very, very upset by this news. I was not in the right headspace to make something last night. I should try it again. I've got enough time to carve something for Dee. Cool, make a gift, we will do. I've been pretty grinchy about Christmas since I came here. <laughs> Eddie tries so hard. I love Christmas, man. You should have taken care of yourself first, Marianne. Aww. This is a totally different life. Can't turn the page. Eddie can't cope with getting rid of any of Carol's stuff. Is Carol his mum? Not sure if we know that or not. Tyler and I should bike around the lake when we've patched things up. It's a pretty big deal that she actually, like, they had their little falling out and she went back to stay with Eddie, like. Alright, what can we make? Is it going to give us options or is she just going to make something on her own? Ah, uh, she's just going to make something on her own. Fair. This better be, <laughs> like, she can't just bash out some masterpiece in five minutes. Surely. 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 Oh my god. <laughs> five, five seconds more like. What the fuck? You have a fucking lucrative career ahead of you. If you just keep doing that. Ugh, the paint smell in here is kind of overwhelming. Whoops. That is crazy. <laughs> just like a fucking gorgeous little wolf head. Like it's nothing. Did I just hear the doorbell go? Morning. Hey, Allie. Hey. Hey, guys. What are you doing here? Tessa and I were worried after you called in sick last night. She's busy at the cafe, but she sent over some coconut cake. Since you won't be making it in for lunch. That's nice, Tom. Thanks. I'm gonna head on inside. Freezing my butt off out here. Okay, uh, thanks. Is Tyler not around today? He's busy. No, he's, uh, busy. And also, I don't totally like trust you anymore, house. my dude. It must be hard to sell the place you grew up in. So many memories, right? Oh, it's okay. We'll get over it. I really hope so. So, Tessa told me a little bit about what happened at the cemetery. Yeah, I'm sorry it got so intense. It's just, we really needed to understand why Marianne did what she did. Especially Tyler. Oh, of course, of course. She gets that. You two didn't say anything she wasn't already huh. thinking. He knew we were going to the cemetery. Years blaming yourself. Well, so he knew we wouldn't be at home. Involved. So that he could come and there try and destroy the evidence. Out. I'm glad you're able to see that. 
It seems like your brother, well... It has to be him. He's not nearly so forgiving, is he? He has been pretty harsh. Especially on Eddie. But we both got tired of people lying to us for our own good. Yes, of course. Uh, totally reasonable. Though, I am sorry you're the one taking all the repercussions. I heard about the fight with your uncle. I really hope your brother appreciates your sacrifices. He will. I... I mean, he does. I'm sorry, but I, I'm pretty beat. Oh, oh, of course. I'll let you rest. Tell Michael there's no need to hurry back. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, Tom. Bye now. Take care. I'm so I'm even more sure it's him now because that is an additional layer of reasons Sorry for, for it to be him. You out there. Pro tip: avoid catching a ride with Tom at all cost. Did he talk about the new spicy chocolate bars? Yep. And exactly what they do to his digestion. Oh, great. What's up with him? What's up with him? I'm not sure I've ever seen him so eager to help. I think he and Tess are legitimately concerned. Plus, uh, door to door is part of campaigning. Yeah, right? he's legitimately yeah, concerned he'll get yes. fucking found out. Help yourself to some waffles if you want. That's Eddie's way of saying I'm worried about you. Oh, that's cute. But I had a ridiculously huge breakfast, so I'm good. You two are both insane. How can you not? take those waffles man I don't know about you but I just really need to get out of Delos Crossing well we're on our way soon right right I don't know I I've just got this feeling it's gonna fall through and and I'm gonna be stuck here forever that's not happening we've got a plan <sighs> I'm glad you're here Michael thanks for coming coffee and a friendly face is just what the doctor ordered, right? I just feel like cuddling up in front of the TV all day. Maybe finally binge that last season of Witches of Eldom. Then do it. Ah, uh, I gotta drag my lazy ass out to have lunch with Dee. Allison, what's going on? Ah, uh, Tyler and I fought. Tyler and I had a fight last night. I was so excited to have him back, but what if... Ten years was too much, and we're too different. I don't think so. You just need to get to know each other again. Start with the small shit. Figure out what each other's favorite foods are, you know? And then build up to the big stuff. Yeah, that, that makes sense. The last few days have been a lot. And it's totally okay to be overwhelmed. You're gonna figure it all out. Families are fucked up. <laughs> They're basically fuck-up factories. You're right. I just need to relax. <sighs> so, maybe this will cheer you up. I think I found the perfect place. Check it out. It's pretty cool, right? Deposit's a bit high, but it's got two large bedrooms and a view of the channel. You're really going to give up our home to live in this ugly box? <laughs> oh god. Allison? Allison, look at me. Are you okay? I'm just... Um... I need to... I, I just need to sit down. It's okay. I got you. What's going on? Okay, no time limit on this choice. Tell Michael about the memories or don't tell Michael about the memories. I think, I don't, I don't suspect him of being in any, like, involved in any bad way with what's been going on. And he seems to be our best friend, so we're going to tell him. God, everything? My anxiety's through the roof. I can't eat anything without getting sick, and... And I've been seeing things. Memories. 
of Marianne and me and Tyler when we were kids and, and Eddie and... It used to just be stuff I'm pretty sure really happened, but... Now I see them everywhere. Shouting every shitty thought I've ever had about myself. I don't know how much more of it I can take. That's intense. I'm sorry, has... Anything like this happened to you before? Right after Marianne died, I had a lot of panic attacks, but nothing exactly like this. Come here, Allie. I hear you, okay? I hear you. He must think I'm completely nuts. No. I think you went through some really bad shit. You never saw anyone about it, right? Yeah, I've looked into therapists a few times, but they're all so far away and so expensive. Well, you know what I went through in 2011. I don't know if I'd still be here if I hadn't gotten help. You got that money coming in from the house. Do we know what happened to him? For our apartment in Juno. I don't want to bail on you. Look, I know you hate letting people down, but you got to put your own oxygen mask on first. I get that. And so does Tyler. Thanks. I'll try. I really need to work on the house today, but Tyler's crashing out there. Not sure if I'm ready to face him. If you want, I could go out there, see how he's feeling and if he's ready to talk. What do you think? Uh, sure. That could work. Yeah, maybe that could work. I hope he'll talk to you, though. He's never been the best at opening up to new people. You sure? Yeah, of course. I don't mind trying if it might patch things up between you two. Oh shit, I'm gonna be late for my lunch with D. I still need to change and stuff, but I can drop you off at the store if you want. Sure, thanks. No, Michael, thank you for listening. I mean it. That's all people need sometimes, is someone to just listen without judging. Cool. Are we going to jump to Tyler now? I feel like that would be a good point to jump to Tyler. Our survey says... Nope. <laughs> oh, place is empty. Weekend, I guess. Well, no, wait. Cops work weekends. <laughs> nope, never mind. Not that Eddie. empty. Hey, beautiful. Are you okay? Because, girl, you look like shit. I uh, haven't been sleeping well. But here I am. That's how much I love you, right? Aw. Well, I appreciate us having a girl's lunch anyway. Just give me five minutes so I can finish off this paperwork. Oh, no rush. I need to drop off some stuff with Eddie. All right. Oh, uh, help yourself to some cobbler. Mrs. Romero sent it over after I caught her flasher. It's in the break room. You better hurry before Greg's kills it off. Mrs. Romero's cobbler? I'm on it. <laughs> I have no I'll idea what cobbler is. I'll you in there when is. I'm done with this. Absolutely no idea what cobbler is. But, uh, it's probably that, I guess. We will find out next time. We will also see this is, like, the last opportunity for the fact that we forgot to put the key back to matter. Is it going to make any difference? Is she going to say mm -hmm. even even just a line where she says how she can't get into her locker? Or, oh no, because we left it unlocked, right? So can't close her locker or something? I don't know. I really, I really want that to make some small difference somehow. But uh, we shall see. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, 
If you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around. Share the playlist around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time for more Tell Me Why. Thanks for watching. See you then.